Don't call it a comeback. He's been here for years. President Obama seemed to wake up in the second of the three presidential debates, seemed a little more engaged, a little more active. Let's talk about it. Let's break it down with Alan Schroeder, who's a professor of journalism at Northeastern, also author of the book Presidential Debates. Alan, appreciate you taking a little time. So, uh, just listen, we're off the top, just give me your broad take of what you saw last night. Broad take is that uh, Barack Obama had a terrific night. You know, he really needed one. Uh, and I think he pretty much came through with the, with the goods. It was a tough format for both of them. And, uh, and Romney had some pretty rough moments, I think. I don't think he did a particularly good job relating to that town hall audience, which, of course, was one of his big challenges. Yeah, so, you know, it's interesting to me. Okay, so the first debate was, was clearly not good for the president. Last right. night, much better for him. For, for Romney, maybe a, a mixed performance. Where is this, what is this set up for the third debate? I know this isn't like, it's not a sporting event. There aren't winners and losers here. It's not like there's a box score. But, but what is this set up for the third debate? Well, uh, of course, the third debate is about uh, international affairs, national uh, security, those kinds of issues, which is thought to give Obama an advantage because as the sitting president, obviously, those are things he's been dealing with regularly. And Romney has never had, you know, a, an executive experience uh, at the international level, um, unless you count the Olympics a little bit different. So I, I think in that sense, you have uh, some advantage for Obama. But as far as the cumulative effect here, I mean, it isn't like a sporting event. Maybe it's a little bit like a four-act play. And so we've got sort of this final, you know, stage of the thing in which to reach some kind of uh, denouement, if you want to look at it that way. Yeah. It, last night there were a couple of zingers, and I want to get your take on some of them. Let's uh, pull up one of, one of them here, the first one we're going to talk about. Uh, they talked about pensions a little bit last night, and they got into it, mixed it up a little bit. Mr. Pen President, have you looked at your pension? You know, I, I don't look at my pension. It's not as big as yours, so it doesn't well, take as let long. Well, let, uh, let, me, let me give you some advice. I don't check it that often. Uh, that was a zinger. Uh, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> and also, you know, I... Mitt Romney, I, I, if I was Mitt Romney's people, I would be saying to him, don't talk about things like what's in your pension. You know, for most average Americans, it's more like, can I afford to put gasoline in my car, not what are the fine points of my pension. To me, that exchange really showed Romney as, uh, as being out of touch with, uh, with the concerns of average voters. Yeah, it's hard to, you know, not many of us have a big pension, right? Uh, let's, let's take a listen to another one here. I want to get your take on this one. Just run this one quickly for me. It took the president 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transcript. It, 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 he did, in, in fact, sir. So let me, let me call it an act of Can terror. Can you say that a little Garden louder, Candy? <laughs> That was the line people really liked it. That can you say it a little louder? You kind of, but, but you know, it was. It seemed to me a kind of a bizarre way that the the debate just kind of got into this very minutia about how they were characterizing the attack in Benghazi. Was that just kind of off the rails? Did that need to go that deep? Oh, probably not. You know, I think one of the problems with having journalists as moderators is that, you know, you often get hung up on, on the details of what is in the news right at this moment. I go back and look at these debates 20 or 30 years later, and, you know, a, a lot of times you can see that they're talking about something that was a really big deal at that moment, but that in the great scheme of things didn't amount to much. So I think we got a little hung up on some of the, the as you say, minutiae there. Yeah. Alan, last night you really saw the president and the challenger go at each other in a way that I'm not sure that we've really seen before. Is, is, has there been a change in debates over the years in, in the amount of engagement? What does that reflect? Well, I think the change is largely due to the, the format changes. You know, this was a format where they really did have the opportunity to grapple, and so they took advantage of that. It used to be that the candidates were very staid behind a lectern. You had a, a, a sort of panel of journalists asking questions. And furthermore, the cam campaigns themselves insisted that the candidates didn't interact. So only in recent years have we seen this uh, trend toward a little more direct engagement.